She was wearing a slinky dress. She was beautiful. That's what Dad said when I asked him about the first time he noticed our mother. And she was running up the street, chasing after her baby nephew, Michael, who she was babysitting. Dad was coming back from the grocery store with his father. He approached her and suavely said, You look familiar. She replied, Well, yeah, I should. We live in the same building. And then he asked her out for their very first date. He actually asked her to marry him on their first date, but she made him wait four years. Building up to that moment, our mother's oldest sister had been noticing our dad looking up at mom's apartment window from the street. Anna would point down to him and say to our mother, Him! See him? You're going to marry him one day. And our mother would look out the window and respond, No. No way. Not him. He's a bookworm. Look at all those books under his arm. When I think of our mother, the very first thing that comes to my mind is how deeply she loved our father. They dated for four years and had been married for 57 years. I can remember her telling me she loved him so much she would be just as happy living with him in a straw shack as she would in a large, beautiful house. Luckily, she never had to live in a straw shack. From their first apartment as a newlywed couple in the Bronx, where my brother Bruce was born, to their apartment in Linden Towers in Flushing, where my sister Stacy was born, to their house in Douglaston, where I grew up, and finally, her true dream home here in Florida, at the Bellagio. Mom was extremely, extremely close to her sisters. She's the youngest of four. There was Anna, her oldest sister, who was really more like a mother to her, as Anna was 18 years older than Mom, and she really raised our mother. When speaking about her, Anna would always call her, my baby, my baby, because our mother really was her baby. Then next is her sister Ethel, and then Sarah. It was very, very hard for Mom to move from the apartment in Linden Towers to the house in Douglaston, because her sisters Sarah and Ethel lived just around the corner from the Linden Towers apartment. She used to tell me stories of how wonderful it was having them so close by, but even though they were so close by, she still spent hours talking on the phone with them. They would laugh and talk about Mama and Papa, their parents, Fanny and Joel. And of course, the phone conversations continued to Douglaston as well as Florida. Mom told me everybody would babysit each other's children. Sarah babysat for my brother Bruce when Mom was giving birth to our sister Stacy. Our mother babysat for cousin Robert all the time, and she loved to reminisce about how all the cousins would play together. Sarah's son Robert, and Anna's son Harold, and Ethel's kids Michael and Barbara, and my brother and sister. I had not yet arrived on the scene, but when I did, I really treasured hearing these stories of Mom's recollections, and she would tell them to me over and over, but I never tired of hearing them. She and her sisters and all the kids and husbands spent their summers together in upstate New York at various bungalow colonies, including Futterman's and Max's in the Catskills. My brother Bruce recently restored and transferred to DVD incredible family footage that our father shot of my mother on his 8mm film camera. She is just so incredibly gorgeous and playful and bubbly and loving and happy. Euphoria just spills out of her. We have footage of her playing Ring Around the Rosie with all the kids and posing sexily for our father in her pinup style swimsuit. Apparently, she and her sisters were always in their swimsuits, even though there was nowhere to go swimming. We see her laughing and kidding around with her sisters and brother-in-laws. Those were very special times, and it's been extremely comforting for us to watch these videos of our mother in the absolute prime of her life. What a beautiful gift my brother has given our family. Mom just absolutely adored all of her nieces and nephews. She equally adored their children. 
Whenever she would talk about Harold and Robert, she just lit up. And she lit up even brighter when she was around or just talking or thinking about their children, Jeffrey, David, and Alex. She kept photos of them everywhere. Baby pictures. She didn't have any baby pictures of herself. I have never seen a baby picture of my mother. They just don't exist. Her parents did not start to photograph her until she was about eight or nine. So she was very determined to have lots and lots of baby pictures of my brother Bruce, my sister Stacy, and me, as well as all the nieces and nephews. This is also why she urged my father to purchase the motion picture camera in the first place. Mom was incredibly beautiful. In her day, I believe she was described as a real dish. Her nickname was Little Ava because she bared such a strong resemblance to the movie actress Ava Gardner. And she did have a true movie star quality about her. She was always posing and very, very glamorous, stylish and graceful. As my sister recently put it, she had a Jackie O-like elegance. During a recent visit to New York, my dad's cousin Arlene shared a story with me about the first time she met my mom and how taken even she was by my mom's natural beauty, both inside and out. She described how mom was wearing a beautiful pink fuzzy sweater and how intensely striking she was with the contrast of her pink sweater, her perfect porcelain skin, and jet colored hair. Not to mention her perfectly matched fingernails and lipstick and of course, she spoke of how genuinely warm and witty Mom was. Mom was very warm and nurturing. She loved animals, and they loved her. There was her very first dog, King. She adopted him, or he adopted her, while living in North Carolina, after our father had been drafted into the Marines. As the story goes, Mom and Dad were over a friend's house, and Mom had mentioned how wonderful it would be to have a dog. The friend said, there's a pack of dogs right next door. Go see if there's one you like. So they went over there and she pointed to the most playful dog who eventually became King. The friend then brought over a hot dog to lure King away from the others. And it was love at first sight between King and mom. Several months later, a soldier was driving by the house and spotted King playing in the front yard. He stopped and called out a different name. The dog ran right to him. Apparently, King already had an owner. Mom was heartbroken, but she knew she had to do the right thing. So she took off his collar and said goodbye to King. Well, about an hour later, the soldier returned King to Mom. The dog was so miserable being away from her that he ripped up the poor soldier's house. It always did feel so good to be near mom.